first edition of the Nahar Jito Bukethal presented in association with the Rai Soni Foundation. In this session, we are going to explore the book, The Star of India, from story to screen. In 1946 Hollywood, Nancy Valentine's whirlwind romance with the Crown Prince of Kosh Bihar leads her to India amidst its freedom struggle. As she navigates intrigue and espionage, Spotty faces opposition from his mother over their marriage and the disappearance of the Mughal rupee. As to their challenges, the star of India vividly traces Nancy's journey from Hollywood glamour to the rich tapestry of Indian royalty, intervene with the nation's historic transformation. A speaker for the session, Diana R. Chambers, was born with a book in one hand and a, and a passport in the other. She earned a university degree in Asian art history and has traveled frequently to the region. Eventually, her road led to script writing and Hollywood, where she met Nancy Valentine and learned of her great love affair with the Maharaja of Kush Bihar. Drawn to the dramatic historical period, Diana knew that this was a story she had to write. Beside numerous screen and teleplays, she is the author of Stinger, a spy thriller set in Afghanistan and Pakistan. A moderator for the session, Mandira Nayar, is a senior special correspondent at the Wii. She writes on foreign policy, culture, books, and history. In 2015, she was awarded the Charles Wallace Scholarship. I would now like to hand over the session to our moderator. Thank you for the invitation. Our theme today is stories traveling. And I'm so grateful to my brilliant agent, Shittish, for joining me today to discuss The Star of India, published by Penguin Random House India. The novel is based on the true life romance of rising young Hollywood star Nancy Valentine and decorated war hero, the Maharaja of Kuch Bihar. It is set in a moment when the world will change forever. To celebrate the world's end, the war, excuse me, to celebrate the war's end, Jagadipendra Narayan, the Maharaja of Kuch Bihar, flies to Los Angeles as the first leg of his US tour. At a glamorous Hollywood party, he meets Nancy. And Nancy has just begun her first big role in a Hollywood movie. She takes him to nightclubs and restaurants, introduces him to film stars and famous entertainers, takes, her, takes him to her studio. They walk on the beach together and fall in love. His US tour forgotten. After the film wraps, she takes him to meet her parents in New York. And then he flies her to his kingdom in Northeast India. For Nancy, this is the journey to the land of her dreams with the man of her dreams. But his mother, the formidable Indira of Kuch Bihar, sees Nancy as nothing but a low-class actress. Unworthy of being her son's wife, the Maharani, and certainly of being Indira's daughter-in-law. After terrible conflict, they do defy her and marry in a traditional wedding and enjoy a blissful honeymoon. But no one will be untouched by the freedom struggle. Kuch Bihar is a frontline state in the political struggle against communism. And Nancy will become enmeshed in a web of conspiracy, espionage, and attempted murder. Then the famed Mogul Ruby will disappear from the state and its prophecy will shadow them all. You might ask, why did I write this story? And I might say it was faded. I've always been connected with India, studied her art and history at university started a uh, importing business there and later took my husband there on our honeymoon. While working in Hollywood, I learned about the story of Nancy Valentine and immediately felt a tingle of possibility about the, about the collision of these two worlds, Hollywood and Royal India. And I felt that there was a dramatic possibility that I really wanted to realize. So I met Nancy, I interviewed her, 
at her home smaller than the Cooch Bahar bathroom. I saw the portrait, the full-length portrait above her bed of the Maharaja and screamed at the tiger skin in her closet, which she always kept as a memento of those days. She shared with me her unpublished memoirs and photographs and told me about her improv Im impoverished childhood growing up and how her most cherished possession was a world globe, which stood mm. for her dreams. And every time she spun it, it always landed on India. I also had such a world globe. And whenever I spun it, it always landed on India. And that made me truly feel the connection between us. Travel has always been my connection to people and cultures. And I've always felt that people and cultures are more similar than different. My first website was silkroad.org, which because for me, the internet was like the modern day Silk Road. And despite it all, I think it still is. My husband and I followed Marco Polo's route from Kashgar in Western China over the top of the world, the Karakor Mountains to Pakistan. There I researched Stinger about the covert US backing of the Afghan resistance against the Soviets. Book ideas have always inspired my travels, but sometimes place and setting has influenced the story, or at least been integral to the plot. For example, the Northwest Frontier Province in Western, Northwestern Pakistan and the Khyber Pass. Nancy's story led me twice to Kuch Bahar, where I wandered the bazaar, the city bazaar, and the palace grounds down to the river, which will overflow during the climactic monsoon scene. I imagine how Nancy, raised in poverty, must have felt wandering those vast spaces, and how the royal family, to them it was all normal. The family, which included Aisha, who married into the Jaipur royal family, used to summer in the hill station of Uti. And for some reason, that was a fascinating place to me. And a few years ago, my daughter and I took the famed narrow gauge steam train all the way up through the mountains and, and uh, tunnels up to Uti. It was a fantastic journey, like this novel has been, one that's brought us here today. Shittage was my earliest supporter. Please, Shittage, tell me what first excited you about the Star of India. Well, well, well. Diana, first of all, thank you so much for giving uh, you know all that context and background to what led you to writing the Star of India uh, and subsequently, you know, all the other uh, stories that you've kind of come up with, uh, which focus on the Indian subcontinent and, uh, you know, neighboring areas. But uh, first of all, I would like to thank the platform of Orange City Literature Festival uh and uh diana chambers because it's only because of the both of you guys today that i'm on this panel uh my journey with the star of india actually began uh diana as you remember around a year and a half uh, before the book was even published uh that's that's when i first read the book uh, the manuscript actually and uh it was it was genuinely one of the most uh one of the most unique novel stories Okay, which essentially spoke about love uh, in the period which, in the perspective of the history of India, is only linked with strife, struggle, and, uh, you know, a lot of turmoil, which is the first thing that, you know, that, that, that attracted me towards this world that you had created so, so craftfully. Uh, once that, once I read the book, I was like, you know, this, first of all, definitely needs to be published. Uh, for sure, because it needs and deserves an audience and a viewership and a readership uh, across the world. Uh, so Diana and I actually uh, started the journey to get the book published, uh, which with, with, with the fantastic Nita Kapoor from Syahi uh, Literary Agency, uh, who was a phenomenal support, uh, you know, to Diana and to me uh, through that entire process. But even before the book was published, one thing that I was absolutely clear about and certain about was that this requires and needs uh, an audiovisual adaptation. Uh, it needs to be seen as a film. 
it needs to be seen as a series you know however the entertainment world kind of responded to it but it was uh, it's it, it 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 was just something there was just something about the story uh, you know in terms of you know how diana explained the worlds colliding and kind of intersecting uh, and coming to coming to this intersection and yet really never intersecting it's there but it's never there that 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 conflict which the story inherently held uh, was 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 pretty damn fantastic and uh, as soon as the book was published and first of all it was really heartbreaking because back, back when we started uh, you know this entire journey uh, there was no sign of covid in the world uh, we were living uh, in free times and by the time the book was published we were already in covid and that was definitely a concern a little bit from 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 your perspective as well diana because how many people will get to read it because books physical books were not being delivered okay that was one of the concerns uh, but then that said there was also this iota of hope were in you know because people had a lot of time on their hands they were reading a lot about they were reading a lot of material they were consuming a lot more content they were engaging a lot more with stories from around the world so well as we kind of uh, you know overcame uh, that notion uh, we started we started the journey you know of of approaching uh, potential partners but what attracted me uh, to the book diana was frankly speaking uh you know the stories uh the stories from the west and the stories from the east kind of coming together and opening up a world which has not really been seen and i would say has still not really been seen uh you know from a from a from a perspective of an audio visual medium uh the only way it has been seen so far would probably be the partition struggle the partition movement and india's struggle for independence and you know that always paints a little bit of a a uh, grim picture and i like looking at brighter stories stories with hope <laughs> and this one gave me hope uh that there is a possibility of love existing uh in a very very borderless situation well it is true that partition there it's unavoidable in any depiction of that period of time and it yeah. is there and the yeah. tragedy and the heartbreak and the unnecessary death but this was a different story this was a different story focusing on royal india which i think is uh, of course royal india there were always uh, princes and maharajas but it was also a creature of the raj of the british empire who played uh, different principalities against each other and uh, it was I wanted to get into a little bit of the background of how that came about and we do see the um the British resident in Kutch Bihar that mm-hmm. was always minding how he behaved and they were also a factor in uh, any political decisions and I wanted to say that the Maharaja inherited the throne when he was about 7 or 8 and his mother ruled as regent on his behalf mm-hmm. until he became of age so that is why she was so powerful and she was still called the maharani so it was an inherent conflict between nancy who would have been his maharani and of course indira this most amazing woman could not mm-hmm. have given up her position so we do see the and we also see the you know the the push toward the inexorable push toward independence toward the birth of mm. the nation but we also see some of the background of history and how we got here correct correct and that's that's what's fantastic right? because essentially it's a love story of two people but it just still manages to open up the world to other people situations which were prevalent in india at that moment in time which is which is fantastic uh but but diana uh, let's 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 uh, let me ask you a question what what is your uh, what is your uh, opinion and you know what do you feel in terms of uh, the star of india getting an audio visual adaptation well i was hoping to ask you the same question <laughs> <laughs> well i i will i will, I will contribute to it but 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 okay. uh, from from a storyteller yeah. perspective from someone who is the origin of the story someone who's lived with it for many many years now uh, yeah. where 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 do you stand And what's yeah, what's your what's I, your vision for it? Yeah, thank you for asking me that because actually to be quite honest, the first time I began writing this material it was for a screenplay because I always saw it as a natural for mm-hmm. an international co-production. And of course, 
having been to India so many times, I, I could see the possibilities and I knew the strength of its film industry. And we met with the, the nephew of the Maharaja. And we met some of the other, we met the prime minister in Delhi and mm -hmm. um, the nephew lives in Calcutta, in Kolkata. So at the time, the only option was as a movie, really, that was, I think that was really the main, the main when option. When was this? As, which, which year was this, if I may ask? Well, this was uh, in the 90s. Ah. And I think I met with him in the 90s. So I'm pretty sure it was around the middle 90s, maybe. Mm -hmm. and, and so it was a little premature, the idea of an international co-production. And then I saw how the world was changing and with the streaming services. And it would be really interesting. You know, we always want to see a big, romantic, lush movie shot with all the production values and the big screen and the stars. But the possibilities of streaming are so intriguing to me about the way you could develop the story. You could develop, you could go and develop more of the characters in it. You could see mm -hmm. more of the conflicts, more of the, the, the background of, of how this, came about. So I think you could open it up in a wonderful way, kind of like mm. The Queen's Gambit, which is a very mm -hmm. narrow book. The Queen's Gambit was such a huge hit on, on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Not, not, not quite as much as The Squid Game, but it's, it was a huge hit, a big award mm. winner. So actually, that was a very, very thin novel. And the way mm. they opened it up gave us more richness of character and texture in the period. So mm. I mean, I would, I would be happy for either, but I could definitely see the value of it being a, 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 um, maybe a limited, a limited yeah. uh, miniseries. Mm. And yeah, I, I've written it to be a novel of quality and texture and richness, but I always did is. see it as a, I always did see it as a, as an audio visual project. Mm. And that's why I feel so lucky of connecting with Shittage, who, who really understands the marketplace. Well, fantastic. So let me, let me just add to that. I think it's also important for me to give a brief introduction in terms of what I do uh, and, you know, exactly what my role, uh, you know, with, with uh, the start of India is. So uh, for the benefit of whoever is listening, essentially, I run this company called Matter Entertainment. We are a talent management company uh, and a production company. In terms of the talent that we represent, we focus on storytellers primarily and storytellers from across the world. Uh, and when I say storytellers, I mean essentially authors, screenwriters and directors. Uh, because at the end of the day, you know, as Diana mentioned, you know, a lot of these streaming platforms as they've ventured into India, the power dynamic has moved a lot more to writing to the creators of content as opposed to who is, you know, the star in front of the camera. Uh, that dynamic shift that's happened even got a little bit more uh, profound during the lockdown because all of us, you know, the kind of stories in India that we responded to did not really have major stars, you know, frontlining them. And I would like to quote a show, for example, a Patal Lok, you know, beautifully, wonderfully written show, uh, but no major stars frontlining it. Uh, and there are a bunch of examples such as that, which have come up even from a global perspective. So at Matter Entertainment, you know, there are, there are two things. Actually, there are three things that we believe. One is that we love books for sure. Uh, second is that we love films a lot. Okay. But there is only one thing that we hate <laughs> that is good books adapted into bad films and bad shows, you know, which is, which, which is, which is, which is where essentially our job becomes a little bit more than just, uh, you know, connecting an author to a production house, because at the end of the day, a deal, you know, or an interest expression of interest is only going to offer so much in terms of what we finally see on the screen. What we finally see on the screen, it's a major, major function of, you know, who is the director and what his vision for the book adaptation is. Now, Diana, of course, has been living with the story since, uh, you know, 90s. It's we're already in 2020, 2021. Uh, it's been almost, what, 25, 30 years now. Now, for that volume, that quantum of effort 
uh, research, conversation, dedication, all of that that's, that's uh, been put into the process by Diana. Someone needs to believe in that and not just believe in that, also ensure that the creative sanctity of that is preserved and preserved even when it's adapted for the screen. Uh, so finding the right director for the project or for the book is of paramount importance. Paramount, paramount importance. Second, of course, as all of us know, you know, unless there's a producer who is attached, uh, you know, nothing moves forward because uh, someone needs to uh, creatively as well as logistically as well as commercially kind of take over the reins of the project and ensure that all the stakeholders, uh, including Diana, uh, who are participating in the project get the right kind of setup to perform uh, their services to the fullest extent. Now, finding a producer is always a double-edged sword because, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, one of the trends that we've seen uh, in, in, in the industry is a lot of books have been optioned over the past two, three years, a lot of them. Okay. But that said, when it comes to a book adaptation uh, into something that we uh, end up seeing on the screen, the conversion rate has not been that high, okay, it has not been that high. And uh, a lot of options, you know, that a lot of books have seen have fallen out or have not really converted. And that essentially becomes a producer's prerogative to kind of, you know, give the project, give the book a little bit more push, uh, find the right director, find the right writer, find the right production designer, because there is a world that Diana has already written about. You know, the, the mehel, the palaces, the forests, the, the Hollywood set, who's going to bring that to life? You know, that, that creative vision needs a lot of backing. So from a, from, from, from our perspective, you know, in terms of adaptation of any book, and it's even more important in the case of Star of India, because it talks about a special period in the history of our country and yet touches upon it, you know, deals with it very, very, uh, softly. Very, very matter of factly without, you know, glamorizing it, sensationalizing it to the extent where it just becomes, I don't know, a bit jingoistic, uh, which is, which is beautiful. And that requires a, that, that requires a fantastic director. That is what we are looking for. In fact, we are in the middle of a very exciting conversation, uh, uh, you know, with a, with a A-list director right now, uh, to bring this to life. But, uh, same, an another production house we need for a fact. Uh, primarily because we need to have a good commercial uh, safety for us, but also most importantly, a creative, creative uh, sort of uh, support through the entire process. Now, once those things are taken care of, okay, that's when the creative conversations begin. So there is, I would say, uh, you know, uh, we've been on this journey, Diana and I and Matter Entertainment for about a year a little over a year uh, and four months now, uh, a lot of which from since the book published, Diana, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, since the book published. Yeah. Since the yeah. book, well, before the book, it's been three years since we've been speaking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For sure. Uh, but since the book published uh, and since the book has been in the public domain, we've been on this journey for about a year, four, four months, five months. And there have been multiple offers that we've received. Okay. So far. But the point is that right fit, the idea is not just to make the sale and exit. That's not how, that's not how I think. That's not how Diana thinks. That's not, that's not how this company that I work with thinks because a sale is an easy thing. Uh, it'll be gone for 12 months. It'll be an adaptation, but we really, really want this to be adapted for the screen to be, for it to be available, uh, you know, on the tiles, right? adjacent to a squid game. To, for it to be available, right? adjacent to the tile, uh, you know, on HBO max shows. Uh, that's, 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 that's where we see it. That's where we see it. And that's, that's the process that we are uh, underway on right now. But it's, uh, well, but, but yeah, sorry, please, please say that. No, I was just going to say, I'm very grateful for you shepherd, shepherding me through this process and not going for an easy sale, which we have had these offers. And you said, no, hold out for something that's meaningful with the creative respect. And also it's important, right? Because from, for, from a book perspective, especially this book perspective, uh, our options are unlimited. Okay. Because it's not an India sale. And while we focus on India sale, we've also kind of tapped into the uh, Hollywood market quite a bit. Uh, and one thing that we were not doing 
uh, you know, for a majority part of, uh, you know, this engagement was tapping into the Hollywood creative community, not just producers who would pay the money and kind of just, you know, uh, make a deal. We've started tapping into the, the directors, the screenwriters, the showrunners, you know, from the West who may just bring about a perspective uh, into the story, but also into the India that, that, that Diana, the, you know, the India in the period that Diana has talked about in her book, a little bit more objectively, because I think as Indians, sometimes we also tend to get a little bit more emotional about it, rightfully so, but that period does bring about, that period does bring about emotions. And sometimes in a story such as this, uh, it's important to understand that it is a story about something else. And this is just the background. And this is just where it is happening. It is something else, nonetheless. So, so uh, you know, from an uh, from a Hollywood American outreach perspective, uh, this book again, it's a, it's 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 absolutely it's absolutely something that we are working towards now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking about our theme today: stories traveling, and this is really an example of that the story in Hollywood going to India and then my seeing that it really has to do with the birth. Actually their story, the Maharaja Nancy, their story was for a while in my mind and you're right to bring it back to the story of two people because sometimes I think that the greater story is the birth of modern India. But that's where the strength of this material is I think because it is Mm. a great love story with so much conflict and emotion and pain and drama and it plays out against this tumultuous background this panorama of india in its birth yeah. pain so yeah. i think there's just a big a big scope here for the filmmakers to to use and more importantly something diana that you and i've been chatting quite a bit about right uh, because the book published during the lockdown and we all all of us had our concerns that what's the what's going to be the future you know now that uh, a lot of studios had kind of stopped optioning books or start stopped investing in you know, stories which were not, you know, well, I don't know what, what a nice way of saying this is, but stories which are not run of the mill. Okay. And also we saw this movement, you know, from a studio perspective that book adaptations primarily became about big spectacles. Okay. There, there is a world, there is a domain in which there are mid-level movies. When I say mid-level, I'm seeing all of these things from a Hollywood perspective. So when I say mid-level, I still mean big, big budgets for an Indian production. But from a Hollywood studio perspective, and it's very important to acknowledge that most of the uh, money that flows into the Indian entertainment ecosystem, you know, via a Netflix or an Amazon, via HBO Max or any of these platforms, it's all American money. At the end of the day, we are being allocated funds uh, to create content. And there was during the lockdown especially, and I think it started to open up now, these mid-level movies, films, scripts, series, shows were kind of suffering uh, also because the theaters were shut that definitely contributed to it. But now uh, that the world has opened up, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's like being back to the races again. That's number one. And the other thing that I actually wanted to uh, uh, say that Diana and I have been chatting about a lot is, uh, you know, how stories have been traveling. How, how a squid games manages to, uh, you know, attract viewership and not just viewership, attract pretty much a billion uh, people to have watched the show, at least if, you know, if the numbers are to be believed. Uh, but uh, both legitimately and illegitimately, you know, it's, it's just a, a, a random statistic that I came across. But so many people watching the squid games, which is a show from South Korea, what were the odds of this happening? three years back impossible impossible people yeah. used to say they would never read read subtitles i mean as you called it i think the the tyranny of the three inch subtitle yeah it's, it's it's like i've always loved watching international productions and i'm used to subtitles but so many people it was just like the end there was no way am i going to do this and suddenly we have these international co-productions that are phenomenal you know the um french shows korean indian it's a, it is literally a whole new world it is it's very exciting absolutely and for one of the things diana I, I don't know if you'd know this but you know subtitles have become such a part of at least the indian culture now that even when we go to watch a hollywood movie 
in a theater and i was i was uh, in the theater just yesterday uh, uh, after almost one and a half two years now uh, i watched this movie shangchi uh, and there were english subtitles uh, and i felt very much at ease because i was like this is exactly how i watch shows on my television when i'm watching it on netflix yeah. right it's just yeah, a much a bigger point. screen yeah. but i feel comforted yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it's it's wonderful yeah. but but that so was you, sh- you went- yeah. sorry yeah. please No, you went back to a movie theater. Yes. That's kind of a big moment. Yeah. <laughs> I I I'd be lying if I said I had tears uh, you know streaming down my cheeks, but it was a it was an emotional <laughs> moment. It was an emotional moment for sure. <laughs> for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 But but well, but that's I, that's that's one aspect of it. Sorry Diana, but that's one aspect of it, right? It's not just stories traveling uh you know uh by virtue of subtitles. It's also another thing. which is uh, as diana pointed out right at the top of you know when she was introducing herself that uh, cultures are not really that different you know people really are not that really different the emotions that people suffer or uh, it's not emotions are not always suffered emotions that people feel are not really all that different there, there's a universality yeah, yeah. there is a universality yeah. in terms of how yeah. human beings are living their lives and the things that they're suffering the things they're enjoying the things they are you know uh feeling uh there is a universality to it and in a world which was locked down and i think it still continues to remain a bit locked down it's obviously the ease of travel is still not you know at at the level wherein it was but essentially diana chambers and people like diana chambers who write stories you know which kind of expose us to different kinds of worlds and different kinds of time periods uh you know they are basically allowing people to travel the world without exiting their living rooms uh and what is well, what what can be a bigger uh, service to human kind yeah. than than that yeah um one thing that you said the other day that i thought was one of the greatest images i've ever heard was about stories being passports and storytellers being the new travel agencies of the world I thought that was so brilliant and I keep thinking about that and you know what a great thing it is to be part of that and to start bringing people together I know that during the lockdown I've never read so many books and watched so much television and it was the escape I think we've all shared that feeling of how do we get out of here through stories through you know visions of other people and it's been the way we can avoid feeling so ca- claustrophobic and lost mm. to interact in this way with you know with people all all over the world and absolutely it's it's been it's been a you know again we could succumb to these restrictions that separate us or we could make every attempt we can to reconnect and totally totally before, agree yeah totally totally so um One thing I wanted to say before we run out of time is that during this period of watching so much television, I mean ridiculous. Um <laughs> although every day I would write, I would only watch in the evening. I wouldn't sit in my pajamas and watch television all day. But okay, that said is every night I've been watching something and I've seen a lot mm-hmm. of Indian productions. And the production values, you know, I do come from a Hollywood background and I'm very aware of production values and acting. and directing mm-hmm. and camera work and it's so impressive of the quality the very high quality of the indian film industry so you know the thought of this movie being produced in india of course for international distribution we hope but you know i would feel in just such safe hands having it be an indian production so i wanted to let our you know the people that will be watching this this session to know of my very high respect for the quality of uh, the workmanship that i see and that now all the world is seeing as well yeah and and also just 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 to add to that right indian film industry has survived and has been an independently run film industry and successfully so for so many decades now i think outside of hollywood india has the most uh, yeah successfully run film industry Uh, yeah ever. you can you can see Globally. that so, yeah but it's, so it's fantastic has, yeah yeah how has covid affected that the local industry the indian industry 
you know i think we we coming out of it now uh, also obviously you know covid uh, last year was a really really uh, it was a big downer uh, but then production started again uh, this year in jan uh, when i say productions i mean people started going on floors and shooting again this this year january onwards and then sometime in april may we hit a rock bottom uh, you know and there was a third wave that kind of crippled yeah. uh, a lot of uh, people and you know a lot of people also lost their lives uh, during that period so that kind of brought the industry you know as well on its knees a little bit but uh, over the past 2 3 months especially uh, things are in full swing things are in full swing the covid cases have reduced drastically in fact uh, i just last week uh, uh, just last week i heard that there have been no covid related deaths uh, that have happened in all of maharashtra uh, in like since, since since march of last year so it's we are uh, like since march of last year this is the first day since you had no covid related deaths so things are bouncing back which is fantastic uh, also it's also the perfect time because now we are entering into this entire you know festive period in india uh, we just got done oh, with diwali, diwali. And, yeah. uh, yeah. we will have other festivals uh, you know uh, which are coming up christmas new years of course so it's good that the momentum in the country is high because the momentum that the country feels is exactly how the industry responds and the industry is pretty much back on its feet and we started jogging uh, uh, we'll be running in no time uh, is what my prediction is that's really really great news that's really but great but generally news. diana uh, you know i have to have to generally thank uh, you know you uh, and storytellers like you who endeavor to actually bring uh you know different cultures together okay uh, and it is while it is an art to write a story uh, but it's also an art to scout such subjects you know which can bring uh, a possibility uh, in a world which is kind of getting a lot more isolated uh, in a world when we're in you know it's becoming a lot more what's local uh, it takes a lot of courage and also uh, conviction to kind of keep tapping into such stories and i know star of india is the topic of conversation but i also know the other stories that you're working on and the fact that you keep doing it again and again well all my respect uh, and admiration and uh, genuinely love for you as well you know for 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 doing this uh, service to all of us well it's not it's it's a calling and i don't i think i've suffered for not writing if i can be honest more american topics i think a lot of people that's really people want maybe a domestic story whatever the country but mm. i really am not able to do that i i see the world and i see global stories and now i see the the possibility of speaking to global audiences i did want to publish this book first in india because the story is so specifically of india but it will also appeal to international audiences so i'm eager for that mm. and i'm eager with uh, should it just help to bring this production to the world in a um audio visual way so, it will happen i it will happen i remain yeah fantastically optimistic about uh, the book and also yeah. stories such as this this is wonderful so well no yeah. doubts over that no That's doubt <laughs> that, that, that yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's just amazing this technology to connect this way. It's you know, it's just quite wonderful. Or thank you to Shiraj for joining me today and it's just it's just a great thrill and I hope to see you guys again next year. Mm-hmm.